I'm gonna go with uh, orangefizz.net. Welcome into the first ever episode of Orange Fizz TV. I'm Craig Hoffman. I'll be joined momentarily by Kevin Fitzgerald, Alex Plavin, Jake Moskowitz, and yes, even Andrew Cannell. Talk about the offense, the defense. What did the recruits that were in town get out of today? And not to mention, the guy we're all talking about, Ashton Broyle. What'd he do? We'll talk to Kevin Fitzgerald, who was told earlier in this week that he would be all over the field about that, and boy, was he ever. Also, we'll talk to Floyd Little, the Hall of Famer, joins us here on Orange Fizz TV to talk about the new football facilities that we've written much about at orangefizz.net. Now, the first time today we've really gotten to see this team, unless, of course, you traveled out to Rochester. So, how'd they look? Coach Marone's squad taking the field in front of outside eyes for only the second time all spring, meaning only the second time to see Ashton Broyled. Here takes the carry outside for the gain of two. Although it was with the second string offense, there was a clear message of get number one the ball. Here they try on the screenplay, but Broyle loops and drops it. Can't beat himself up, though, as no matter what position he plays this year, it's going to be a learning experience. More on that later with Kevin Fitzgerald. As for the starting offense, Ryan Nassib was pretty sharp. Here hitting his biggest play of the first quarter to Beckett Wales over the middle. Nice gain. That drive would stall, though, thanks to the big man, Eric Kroom, the sophomore, getting up the middle, forcing Nassib to hit his favorite receiver from the end of last year, the ground. The defense really the story of the day. So that's how they looked. How'd we get here? 13 days of spring practice. And Zach Chabain told us after the game that despite our frustrations in the media of not being able to see this team, that was actually a good thing. And the close practices, yes, indeed, did actually help. You know, I know you guys probably don't don't want to hear that, but you know, having having the press not there and just be us, just be the offense, defense, the coaches and, and the support staff around us, it's it's really helped us to really buckle down and get a lot done in these last five or six weeks. Shebane says they helped, and Doug Marone was the man that made that decision. And he was not only impressed with what he saw today, although he would have liked to see a little bit more scoring, more on that in a moment, but he's impressed with what he's seen over the past 13 spring practices. We had 13 outstanding days of practice. So, you know, when I look at, at spring football, you know, I don't put it all in on one day, you know. So I look at it as, as far as the body of work. So when you look at the 13 days, you know, that we had before we split up the team, you know, it's been outstanding. People are getting better. There's a lot of players that, you know, a lot of the younger players from practice 11 to practice 13 made an outstanding push, really saw a jump in their ability. And, um, you know, that's exciting. One of the big things we were looking for today, the return of Marcus Sales, number five, back after the last time we saw him was scoring touchdowns in New York City, the pinstripe ball, suspended last year after his arrest, something, a crime that apparently he did commit. He was eventually acquitted of all charges. But he was back today and back with a force, a couple of nice plays. So, Marcus and quarterback Ryan Nassib, how is your chemistry today? Yeah, he's all right. No, I'm kidding. No, he, no me, and, uh, me and Mark, we had a great spring. Um, you know, we, uh, we definitely made some strides. I mean, it was a little rocky starting out just because, you know, we haven't really been in, uh, you know, padded situation in a while. But having him back, you know, brings a whole other dimension to our offense. And he, he's definitely had to do a lot of work. Uh, when he got here, he, wasn't, he wasn't in, obviously wasn't in football shape. Uh, it took him a couple of weeks to, to kind of get his, you know, get his timing back and all those things that you lose when you don't play the game for a while. Um, but but I think what he's brought is is he's brought some veteran leadership. Uh, he gets he brings some of those young guys up and watches film with him and things like that. Uh, you know he has a great command of the offense. He's one of the players that you can put at several different positions and, and, and he'll be able to get in and, and and really not have much of a drop off. Um, and but I think overall um, this this uh, off season is going to be important for him. He's going to have to uh, get himself stronger, get his strength back. Um, and I think if he can do those things, he'll he'll be able to help us a lot this year. Me coming back, being off a year, and uh, just getting back in shape and getting uh, back to the speed of the game was a uh, thing I wanted to uh, focus on during spring ball. And I think I was able to accomplish that. So I think it was a great spring for us. Another change we saw today, a little bit more running from the quarterback position. Surprisingly, it came a lot from Ryan Nassib, John Kinder. He actually wound up staying in the pocket, and Charlie Loeb was, well, he was Charlie Loeb. But that's something we're going to see more this year. And Ryan Nassib talked to us after the game about how a mobile quarterback can affect this offense. I mean, after last year, we realized, you know, we need a, we need a, a little more offensive performance. And, um, you know, we, we added a little wrinkle with the, with the quarterback running, um, the option, having the option of quarterback run. Um, I mean, a lot of the time, it's not necessarily going to be a quarterback designed run, but we're all, like a lot more of the time in the run game, I'm going to have the option to run. So, 
you know, we'll have plays where, you know, uh, I give it to running back or I take it. You know, we can call that maybe 10 times, but I may only keep it twice. So um, that's something we added in. And, um, you know, that, it's not really new to me. I kind of did that a couple years ago um, when I was a rusher freshman. But, you know, we kind of had gotten away from it. But now we're bringing it back. And uh, we also got some younger, like, young, the younger quarterbacks who are doing pretty well with that, too. So, I mean, that just, you know, having that in our system, you know, can open up a whole bunch of different dimensions and, you know, uh, give us more opportunities to make big plays. In the end, John and Selmo's team won 9 nothing. Yeah, not exactly a high-scoring affair. The only touchdown came on a strip sack by Jay Bromley, and then Brandon Sharp picked it up, ran on into the end zone. Those two talked about that play after the game. It was just a good play call. Uh, I stepped out there, I got through the blocker, and uh, I was surprised that the quarterback held the ball. So I just ran after him, tried to tackle him, the ball came out. I was watching the ball as it rolled, and I was like, please let somebody from my team pick it up. And then Sharpie was right there for the touchdown. Uh, I just felt it was a great play by Bromley. He, he knocked the ball out, and I just seen the ball rolling. And I was like, thank you, Bromley, and I just <laughs> scooped the score. If you want to take any positive out of the fact that it was a 9 nothing win, I guess it's that the nine points were scored by the team with Ryan Nassib, the starting quarterback, John and Selmo's team, led by number 12. And after the game, Nassib was kind of lukewarm on his team's performance offensively. Obviously, he wanted to score more, but Marcus Sales had a slightly different idea. At this point, that um, we didn't score, but uh, you know, we had a lot of factors. There's a lot of factors that went in that um, you know, kind of made it difficult for a lot of us. I mean, some of the play calling and uh, situational st and the situational stuff was you know a little bit different than what it really is going to be. I mean, I mean, Marcus just ran. 40-yard go to get us all the way down there, and then he has to get back in. Or in a real-life situation, they'll probably give him a blow it's just because, you know, you don't want some, a winning guy out there in a big play. So, and, you know, we're, it, but, you know, excuses aside, yeah, we wish we could have scored a little bit more uh, points. But, um, I mean, at the end of the day, we won. Yeah, it's true. We took a lot of shots. We had a lot of opportunities, and you know we made some plays. You know, at times um, early on, we got kind of off rhythm. You know, with the penalties. So I was, uh, you know, I was excited. It wasn't from a, from a lack of not taking enough shots down the field. Alex Plavin joins me now, and Alex, you heard Coach Marone talk about how the offense was taking more shots today. That was one of our big complaints last year. What did you think of the aggression of the offense or on the offensive side today? Well, I guess you could definitely say that they took more shots. I mean, last year they weren't even throwing the ball more than 15 yards downfield, and they, and they connected on several. You got to give them credit. I think they had a couple to Kobina. They had the nice one to Sales, and then there was the long play with Broiled. So the big plays were there more, but. The points, still not there. I mean, they didn't score on offense. The defense outscored them 9 nothing. So as much as you want to be positive and say, well, they did they did move the ball and they did get some shots, the zero points is still zero points. I know they missed two chip shot field goals, but you'd like to see at least one time in the end zone. Right, or hey, let's make a field goal too. It's, it's I thought one of the funniest things as we noticed during the game, the referee for today's contest, the same one that missed the extra point call against Toledo last year. Clearly, he's Syracuse's favorite ref, uh, Asher Broyles. Yeah, it was, it was. So Asher Broyles, you mentioned him, huge plays uh, all over the field. As you know, Kevin Fitzgerald's guy told us, the source told the Fizz, he's going to be everywhere. What were your impressions of Asher Broyles today? Well, he doesn't really look like a quarterback. I mean, he's extremely athletic. Big he looked pretty fast out there. I would have liked to see him get a few more snaps at the quarterback position. I really thought when you looked at it, he was it was good to see him out there as a slash, and I like the potential of what he can do on offense, but I just really, really don't think that Nassim needs to be the quarterback every down. He's your primary guy, and there's no question, but I think Broiled having five to ten snaps, just because of, he can give you so much more on the perimeter and things like that. I think it'd be good for them to at least attempt to get him a couple snaps under center, wildcat sort of things. Yeah, certainly. And uh, actually, Ryan Nassib talked after the game about how Ashton Broyle performed today. Ashton's a, you know, he's a very raw football player. The kid's got, you know, tremendous upside. Um, you know, just like any incoming freshman, you, you get a lot put on you at first. You know what I mean? It, it, with the playbook, how to get lined up, you know, it's, it's a lot. So, you know, we, you know a lot of the older guys, you know, some of the older running backs, myself, are going to make sure that uh, you know we bring him along as much as we can. You know, instead of trying to throw everything on him at once, we're going to bring you know bring him by piece by piece, because uh, we you know, we know how you know how much he could help us out there and uh, you know, with depth and you know with um, you know with big plays. 
And then on the receiving end, whether it be Broiled eventually maybe throwing some passes or the man you just heard talking, Ryan Nassim. Marcus Sales was back. Jeremiah Kobina had a couple of really nice plays. What would you make of the receivers today? I thought they were pretty impressive overall. I mean, last year they weren't really getting down the field and making big plays. And at least the one thing you could say this year is, especially in the second half, they got, they got aggressive, started making some plays down the field. That was big to see because last year that was like a whole season's worth of, of big plays that they got in this one game. Would have liked to see them, like I said, get into the end zone. But the receivers were pretty impressive today. We don't have a full complement, but Kobina so far good. And Sales getting back into it. I expect him to be a huge factor for them this year. So seeing him catch a couple balls was good. I, you know, he's going to work himself back into shape and be a key part at some point. Clearly, he'll keep working out. Uh, Alec Lemon not playing today, so we'll see how that develops as we move into the season. Alex Plavin on the offense. Orange Fizz TV continues now. So look ahead to the defensive side of the ball. You know, last year we lost five straight. You know, uh, we had that mentality. We had that chip on our shoulder, you know, coming into the spring, you know, that we don't want to let that happen next year. So, you know, we all just had that, that grinding mentality, you know, that we just all have to get better as a unit. And, um, you know, it started before the spring, you know, just competing in the weight room. And um, just the little things Coach Luther and Coach Hicks had us doing, you know, uh, off the field and in the weight room. And that kind of transferred over towards the spring ball as, you know, the spring started going on. And, um, you know, I just feel like, you know, as a defense, you know, we, we all know what we got to do. You know, we're not young no more. You know, there's no more excuses. And, um, you know, we're just trying to get better as a unit, as a team, and that's it. All right, Jake, you heard it. It's Jake Moskowitz joins me. Dyshawn Davis said the defense had a chip on their shoulder this spring. Seemed to prove it today. Yeah, you know, how can you not have a chip on your shoulder? You lose five games in a row, especially for a team that's really defensively oriented. Uh, a guy that's stepping into a leadership role like Davis um, is going to say something like that. And, you know, he's right uh, because they, they do have something to prove coming off of last season. I think they made some headway with that today. Absolutely. Defense, the only side of the ball that scored. So they really dominated today. One of the biggest questions, the safety spot opposite of Shamarco Thomas. We know 21 is going to be starting. Darrell Eskridge played there. Desir played there. Shubungwa played there. Who's going to be the guy? Jeremy Wilkes. Who's going to be the guy that steps in? You know, uh, it's hard to say because, as you said, you know, Shamarco really is that aggressive back, that guy who's really going to be in the major coverage. Um, but, you know, I, I liked a lot of what I saw today uh, out of Rashard Anderson and, and out of, uh, like you said, uh, Jeremy Wilkes is a guy who could step up too. Um, but, you know, it's really a backfield dominated by Shamarco Thomas. I think he's going to step into that kind of Philip Thomas role of being that dominant back um, and that guy who's, who's really going to pick up their best receiver. Um, so I think it's a little early to tell at this point exactly who's going to be playing opposite him for the majority of the games. Obviously, Keon Lynn was out today. You mentioned Rashard Anderson at the corner spot. Keon Lynn didn't play today. For the most part, though, that defensive secondary was healthy. Anybody else stand out? Obviously, I think defensive line stood out. Defensive line was huge, but uh, in the secondary, you know, Brandon Reddish made a lot of great plays today, especially for his age. And like you said, Keon Lim was out, so you're not sure if that's something that, you know, he was coming into his own because he had those that many reps. Uh, Coach Marone said it, you know, for, you know, something like 500 reps this spring. Uh, it's powerful for a guy like him, and he's really coming into his own as a player. Um, so he, he really impressed me with, uh, with the plays that, that he made today. Obviously, Jay Bromley, we talked about off the top of the show. The sack, Brandon Sharp picked it up, ran into the end zone. Jace Moskowitz covering the defense today, and now he's going to go cover the lacrosse game. You can follow him on our Twitter page, at Orange Fizz, all across season long. The atmosphere today was light, I guess is probably a good way, a nice way, a uh, civil way to describe it. But for guys like Wayne that came up, what do you think they got out of today and, and this weekend? Well, I don't think they would have been overly impressed with the amount of fans that were in attendance or anything. That's just being honest. It was a pretty, as you described it, light environment might be the kindest way to really refer to it. But as far as what happened on the field, I mean, if you're thinking about being a defensive player, then it's probably pretty encouraging. This team looked to be good with the pass rush. I mean, Jay Bromley in particular was really, really good. And they just seemed to get after the quarterback, create turnovers, had an interception late in the game. And then on the opposite end, I mean, if, if one thing's good, the other's not going to be as good. That's the way a spring game works. And the offense wasn't as good. It was, you know, Nassib hit on a couple deep balls. Marcus Sales looked like he had that chemistry going with Nassib. But besides that, lots of turnovers, lots of sloppiness, lots of penalties. If you're a recruit watching this, you might be thinking, I can get that job. There's a lot of open spaces on the field because there were a lot of players that weren't playing all that smoothly. A lot of 2013 guys you would hope would have been here today because it's also the junior day for Syracuse. 
But it didn't seem, I mean, when looking around, you didn't be like, oh, there's a recruit, there's a recruit, there's a recruit, as we're looking around. Does that cause for concern, or were they just hidden in the trees amongst people, and we didn't really, I mean, what do you make of that? Well, I mean, how many of those guys were New York guys? And there, were only, there were only so many New York players that were recruited to this team. So I wouldn't exactly read too much into the fact that there weren't recruits because they, they've already decided to go to Syracuse. That's well, I'm talking 2013 guys, though, because today was also supposed to be a junior day. So the fact that you didn't feel like there was recruits dotting the sidelines, whereas you see a lot of that in the bigger spring games, is that cause for concern? I mean, I would just say that is this really a place where you'd want to bring a 2013 recruit to showcase your program? I mean, it was it was dead in there. The, the crowd environment wasn't very good for most of the spring games. So I guess in the perfect world, yes, you'd like to see more recruits around, and we didn't see very many. But on the other hand, maybe an actual game or, or something later in the year would be a better opportunity to showcase your program to those recruits rather than a crowd of a few thousand at the most on hand for you know a pretty dead spring game. Right, junior days, some far more important to some programs than the other. Maybe Doug Marone doesn't put as big an emphasis. Clearly, as we've seen and talked about with the closed practices and closed everything, Doug Marone does things just a tad bit differently. Andrew Cannell, well-dressed. He'll go call the uh, lacrosse game for WAR now. Good work, my friend. Thank you. Last week, Kevin Fitzgerald, you had someone tell you that Asher Broyle was going to be all over the field, and boy, was he and us you right. What were your impressions of Ashton today? Well, look, Ashton, we know how creative and how versatile he is on the football field. He obviously saw that big, that one big play, the pass from Johnny Kinder out in the flat, and he was able to take it down the sideline for a big run. We know his explosiveness. And it's, it's like I had said last week, he, you're going to see him on the football field. You're going to see him at the quarterback position, the running back position, the wide receiver position. We saw him out in the slot today. The question was where he looked most comfortable. I, I think him li lining up out in the wide out on the far sides of the field, uh, he's probably better suited in the slot. I think so. Those short screen passes, those bubble screens, I think that's uh, an area where he's going to excel this year. Absolutely. But it's because of that versatility. And he's so explosive. He's got the size. He's got the speed. It's the total tools for that complete package. And I don't know. The, the thing that concerns me, though, he did have a couple of drops today. And there's also a concern over his top end speed. We always talk about 40 time and say that it's overrated. Well, the one position that I think it's not un, or not overrated is at the wide receiver spot. It's so one of the few positions on the field where you actually occasionally do run 40 yards in a straight line. On the big play you talked about, the one on the sideline, if he had stayed on the sideline and been able to run straight, he has a touchdown. Ashton Broyled is fast for a quarterback. He's not fast for a wide receiver. Does that cause concern if he's going to be playing running back and receiver? That he, while he's a great athlete, he's big, he's shifty, he's hard to tackle, he doesn't have that top end speed. I think that's why you keep him in the slot. You talk about a couple of those, those uh, drops that he had. They were when he was backing up, trying to receive a, a pass off a screen play. I think you keep him there, though, because that's when he has the blocks and that's where he has the ability to create and shift through the tackles. Like you said, out in the open field, Maybe it's a little bit questionable, the ability, but that's why I think you'll see him more in those short, those type of short yardage runs. Obviously, we'll see him, I think, maybe a series every half at the quarterback position, and that's way down the road in the regular season. But if he's going to be at the wide receiver position, keep him in that slot for those, for those screens where he can work with what the blocks give him. And he's so raw. We heard Ryan Nassib talking about that before. We brought up Asher Broad, obviously. We talked about the offense with Alex Blavin. But... Do you think long term, after seeing that he's going to be playing primarily running back and receiver today, do you think long term he is a quarterback at Syracuse? I, I think so. I mean, the, the thing, the most exciting plays today was Johnny Kinder airing it out. I think that drew some, some oohs and ahs. You also saw Ashton Broyle there with the big, the big play that I just had said. I think next year when Nassib is gone, that's going to be one heck of a quarterback battle. I mean, that, that's going to be a fun combination running your offense at the quarterback slot. And, and, and hey, who knows, maybe Broyles still plays at those secondary positions in the backfield, out, out in the far side of the field, at the wide out position. But I think Kinder and Broyles next season, as we're looking way down the road now, is going to be a nice combination at the quarterback position. I think he can stick there and, and be effective. And you hope maybe even that Broyle beats Kinder out. I mean, John's a guy that's been around for a couple of years. You'd rather see Broyle have maybe three years as a starter and really be able to develop. So I, the biggest thing to me with Broyle is he passes the eye test. When you look at Ashton Broyle and you go, who's that dude? Who's the tall guy wearing number one? Ashton Broyle, an elite athlete. 
Also an elite athlete in his time, the Hall of Famer, NFL Hall of Famer, Floyd Little. We talked about the fizz, on the Fizz how there's going to be new football facilities, and Floyd Little is certainly one of the brains behind that. We caught up with him before the game. Big announcement for Syracuse football this week, the new facility is coming. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure that's something you've talked with Dr. Gross about. What do you think that's going to bring to Doug Marone's program? Well, I, I think it just really gets you modernized. I mean, the facility is like it was when I was here. I mean, we really need to have some changes. We're moving into a new conference. We're competing for the best athletes, the best talent. And we got to be representative of who we are and what we are going forward. I think what they're doing is totally dis demolished now. Can't even get back there. I've gone back there a couple of times to go to the cafeteria and everything is gone. But uh, it looks great. It's going to be great when it's done. And how much do you think this has to do with the fact that you guys, as you mentioned, are going to be going to the ACC, higher competition, ramp up in the competition, and the recruiting, obviously, in the South is a whole different animal than it is against the schools up here. How much do you think the timing is uh, coincided with the move to the ACC? Well, this is all, it was already on the agenda. I mean... The fact that we're moving to the, another conference has nothing to do with us renovating the, the facilities out there. This was on the on the, the board to be done, and we just try to raise the money to do it. So now we've raised enough money to start the project, and we need to do that anyhow. We need to renovate. We need to move forward. We need to do different things. We need to get back into a system where we can compete, compete, uh, compete and uh, get the best talent we can get. And lastly, what do you expect to see today? Spring football, always a fun kind of year. The fans' first chance to see this team, unless they've traveled out to Rochester. What do you th expect to see today? Well, I've watched these guys grow and mature. I think you have a different maturity level. Yeah. I speak with a lot of the players on a daily basis. They tell me now that they've learned more. They know what to, is expected of them. They uh, got a lot of confidence. A lot of the guys are now juniors, uh, not sophomores, and not freshmen. But I think that they are, we're going to see a different team. There's a lot of different, uh, you got sales back, as they just mentioned his name. You got confidence in Ryan, who can do a lot of things. You got good receivers. I like the defense. Our defensive backs and our defensive linebackers got speed and they got size. And we haven't had that. So I think you'll see a different defensive team. Uh, I think you're going to see a team that's got more confidence and uh, see a team that's more mature. Boy, thanks for joining us here on Orange Fist TV. That wraps up our coverage here at YouTube.com slash FizzFirst. Thank you so much for joining us here at our first ever episode of Orange Fizz TV live from the SU Spring Game. You can follow us during any football, well, basketball, or it's about to start behind me, lacrosse game, at Twitter.com slash Orange Fizz, at Orange Fizz. Just give us a quick follow, and you'll have all the best in-game breakdowns you could possibly ask for in the SU Twitterverse. Keep reading over at OrangeFizz.net for my partners, Kevin Fitz. Gerald, Alex Plavin, Andrew Cannell, and Jake Moskowitz, and yes, the Hall of Famer, Floyd Little, joining us to talk about the brand new football practice facilities. I'm Craig Hoffman. Thanks for watching.